So, I'm here with Alex Hahn. Maybe we'll just have a impromptu conversation. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, let's just talk. Tell me a little bit about the record company. Man, it was such a whirlwind because it all just happened so fast. Like, getting to Israel is so far away. It's like literally on the opposite side of the world from where I live, which is like here. Um, so it was like LA to New York, which was like five and a half hours, and then layover another hour, and then New York to Tel Aviv, which is like 11 hours, and then Tel Aviv to Elot, which is another hour, and then like a 12 hour time change or 11 hour time change so just getting there was like exhausting so I got there and passed out immediately I was so tired I think I went to bed at like 6 p.m. or something and then the next day we had audition or not auditions um, uh, rehearsals with the, with the trio that we're playing with and got to hang with the other cats and kind of walked around the city and stuff like that and the next day was the competition all day so we had the semifinals in the late morning and then there was a big old break in the in, in the middle of the day, and then we had the finals at night, and then the next day we came home. So like it all just like was such a whirlwind. It took me like a week or so when I came home to like realize like what kind of like what had <laughs> what had happened. Um, so it was just a crazy experience getting to hang with the other cats. It was, it was super awesome, burning amazing saxophone players, um, getting to meet Susan Brecker, you know Brecker's widow. You know, it was really an honor because of how much I shed Brecker and listened to him and learned so much from his recordings and it's just an awesome experience. This day and age of music is like competitions and conferences and stuff is like your opportunity to meet people and your opportunity to connect with people and have contacts all over the world, you know, and it's different than like, hey, you're in a touring band and you're going to all these cities and now it's like, again, these conferences and these festivals and these, and these competitions are such a great way to meet people that you would never ever meet before. I'll talk a little bit about the last one just because oh, yeah. uh, New Flight, which came out, um, what was it, August? I think it was August, yeah, end of August. I'd recorded it back in June of 2018 and I had kind of talked about it with um, a couple record labels, maybe they would sign me, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And that didn't end up working out, so I just released it myself. So by the time I had released the record, which was again August 2019, I was already super sick of all these tunes. Like I was tired of playing them. I wanted to hear new songs. So that came out, and I did a couple shows of the music to, as like CD releases. Um, but starting in 2020, um, I have like three or four new new tunes written. Um, I have ten on the way that I'm trying to finish. No kidding. Um, so already starting to work on the next one because again, like I said, I'm already sick of these last ones. So I'm ready ready for the next step and kind of doing something different, a little bit more of an electric album, um, a lot of backbeat kind of stuff, um, a little bit of smooth stuff thrown in there, because that's my smooth at heart, you know? Yeah. I'm a smooth player at heart. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. I'm trying to record in the summer, um, so stay tuned, maybe uh, early next year, that'll come out. I've been thinking about it, because I have an EWE, and I, I was really shedding it hard, like right when I got it. but. Um, it's like a whole nother ball game to like get into with designing the sounds and buying all these patches and really learning to play the instrument. So we'll see. Maybe just alto with maybe some pedals and stuff, but um, at the very least. So I had my Mark VI for, since high school. Um, my dad's a saxophone player um, and he played a Mark VI. So in high school I would come home and be like, Dad, can I practice on your Mark VI? Like, I'm so excited. Um, so he got me my own Mark VI when I was a senior in high school. And I played that all through North Texas and USC and even when I started the Monk Institute. And then Eastman approached me about playing their alto and I was really skeptical. I'm like, man, this Mark VI, like, this is, this is like my horn, like, this is my sound. And I played the Mark VI, or the, played the Eastman 52nd Street alto and I was like, whoa, this is like a game changer. It's a totally different sound concept. It's like a lot warmer, a lot rounder, a lot more open, not as narrowly focused and kind of allowed me to kind of be a little bit more flexible with my sound, which is something that's really, really nice. Um, so that's been a change over the past, I would say, three or four years of switching to the Eastman from the Mark VI. Um, uh, the mouthpiece I play is a Meyer 7M. It's not a fancy one, it's not a New York one. It's an $85 mouthpiece from some random music store. Um, and I've been playing on it basically since high school. So to me, mouthpieces, I want to learn how to play a, and never switch mouthpieces ever. Um, and I've basically been playing a Meyer my entire life. Like I played a Meyer 5, 
then when it came time, I did a Meyer 6, and then now I have Meyer 7. So I'll probably never ever change mouthpieces just because I really know how this mouthpiece plays. I'm really comfortable with it. Um, my ligature is the Rico H ligature, and reads I play Diodario, Jazz Selects, free mediums. So I'm pretty consistent on gear. I don't like to change very much because I really like to learn how to play it, like I was saying before. Um, and then I feel like I can really like, mold myself around the gear rather than, you know, okay, switching this, and then there's too many variables, and it's just it's just kind of a snowball effect where it's like, okay, then this read, and then this read, and then this mouthpiece, and this mouthpiece, and like, it's a slippery slope. So I try to stay with the same gear. Well, man, it was weird. Like, especially with Instagram, I was really late to get to the Instagram game because I was like, man, this is dumb. I just want it to be about the music and not about the marketing and all kind of that kind of stuff. And it was when I was about to release the Emerging album, so two albums ago. I was like, man, I want this album to reach as many people as possible. How can I do that? Okay, well, I'm going to set up an Instagram account. I'm going to go a whole year of making videos and being really consistent with my posts and all that kind of stuff. And I grew like 10,000 followers in the first like year. I was like, man, this is reaching a lot of people. And then, you know, I come to these shows and people are like, oh, man, we got Alex Hahn from Instagram. It's like, it's been an incredible way to connect with people. And that's how I connected with you, too. It's like, man, it's crazy how, how that stuff happens so fast. And so it's like, I feel like now you have to be doing both. You have to be in the professional world of making contacts in person from you know, getting gigs and being in LA and this person, this person, that person. But then it's like, man, if you wanna be outside of your bubble of where you live, it's like Instagram and all that kind of stuff is the way to do it. So you have to do both. So it's been a nice balance to, to, to be on Instagram and get to know people through there and then you know, be in the real world and do stuff and you know, like I said, balance it, balance it out. So I do basically anything I can get my hands on. I try to play like once or twice a month with my own band, um, with my own music, um, just so I can keep workshopping my original music and hearing people play my different music at different, coming from different backgrounds, different approaches, musical approaches and that kind of stuff. But I'm also doing tons of sideman stuff. Um, so like this week, specifically, I had a sideman gig on Monday, a sideman gig on Thursday. I had this on Saturday. Uh, I teach at the LA High School for the Arts. So that was all week this week. I teach private lessons, I compose for other people, I arrange for other people, I do big band stuff, I write for strings, like, it's so important to be, you know, as marketable as possible so you have all these different, you know, income streams, you know, coming from all these different places. Um, so I'm a super, super big sports fan. Um, I'm a big football fan and baseball fan. And anytime, you know, I'm kind of, I need that recharge of like musical inspiration. It's so nice to get away and like just worry about sports. And I'm a huge Eagles fan. And actually, this is the first year. My whole family's from Philadelphia, so that's why I'm a huge Eagles fan. Um, I went to a Philly, uh, Eagles game in Philadelphia over winter break. Um, it was so 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 fun. Um, and also, my wife is a is not a musician; she's a lawyer. So it's so nice to like go home and not have to worry about music and kind of just talk to her about her day or talk about you know just random stuff. And it's such so nice to have that balance of not music, oh, you know, 24-7. It's nice to have, you know, my wife who's not there, and sports is my release from music, too, so. Because actually, I almost became a sports broadcaster. That was, like, my dream. Oh, no, do you have the voice for it? Not really, but I was just, like, so excited. I just love sports so much that, because even when I was applying for colleges, I had applied to a bunch of schools for, for sports broadcasting, um, and it was, like, really random, like, the the month before I had to decide of what school I was going to, I was like, man, I'm just going to go to North Texas and be a musician. And it kind of just like spun on me super randomly. So I almost went into sports broadcasting. So again, sports is always a passion and hobby of mine of, again, getting away from music and, and recharging. So I have that inspiration and, and dedication to kind of work back and, you know, be super serious about it. Hi, my name is The Real Alex Hahn. Check me out on Instagram, uh, Facebook page, um, Real Alex Hahn, Twitter, Real Alex Hahn. Uh, check out, check me out.